Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You all look awake and relatively dry. I hope you all had nice Thanksgivings. Uh, I can say I'm truly grateful to be here. Uh, I'm grateful uh, that the MAP offices are adjacent to the Nexus offices because we have this constant source of inspiration coming to us. And to Daphne and Children United Nations, we're truly thrilled to be working with all of you. Thank you. So when I was getting rained on on the way to the Capitol today, uh, I noticed, uh, and you probably all noticed too, the dome here is under construction. They're renovating the dome, uh, a truly historic uh, renovation that they're undergoing. And I thought, how fitting is that? This institution, our institutions of governance, are at tremendous peril. And it's our belief at the Millennial Action Project that the best hope for us to overcome that lies in the millennial generation. Let me give you two data points. First, current levels of polarization in Congress are at the worst they've been since the end of Reconstruction. Two, the fastest growing political affiliation in our country and disproportionately among millennials is no affiliation, is independent. There is a paradigm shift coming to Washington and to governance across the country. And there is a fundamental question that we have to answer. How will this next generation govern our country better and more collaboratively? So that is the question the Millennial Action Project is dedicated to answering. We envision a world where cooperation is the dominant governing paradigm for the millennial generation. And the first members of our generation are currently here. I mean, truly, this is a generational shift occurring. And we have the honor with the Millennial Action Project to work with them, the youngest members of Congress, the first millennials, uh, the co-chairs, who you'll hear from later today, Congressman Aaron Schock, Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard, and many other of their colleagues. And last year, together, we formed the nation's first millennial-led Future Caucus. And together, we rallied 20 other members of Congress, and we're honored that five more are about to join in this new session. And in just one year, Things have totally changed. If you search millennials in Congress and Google right now, you'll see that the dominant narrative is how they're finding common ground. They've sponsored bipartisan legislation on things like immigration and social impact bonds. Today is Giving Tuesday, a national global day commemorating philanthropy and volunteerism. And the Future Caucus is proud to sponsor the bipartisan resolution commemorating that. So today you're going to hear from a wide range of speakers and you know a lot of people are interested why we have people not known for cooperation speaking here today. <laughs> and I said to anyone who's asked, that is exactly the point. Because the movement we are generating here is larger than the old generation of bipartisanship. This is not just about the moderates. If our movement is constrained to the people just in the middle, when you see what's happening across the country, we lose. We lose. The only way we're going to be successful is if we broaden the tent of our engagement and we bring everyone to the table. And you're seeing examples of that uh, occurring not just in this past session, but you'll see something here that's pretty special uh, this morning. The last thing I want to say is, Although the headlines in politics are conflict, no question, you have to realize that the trend lines are towards cooperation. If you see what the millennial generation is doing, not just in Congress, but across the country, they are changing politics for the better towards cooperation. So we have every reason to be hopeful 
and optimistic, but we know that vision won't come to fruition without the hard work of everyone in this room. So that's why you're here today. And the last thing I'll say, we talked about the gateway to the future. The best source of support we have for this next generation of leadership is the founders themselves. Jefferson, who lived to be 83 years old, submitted the Declaration of Independence when he was 33 years old. James Madison, who lived to be 85 years old, was first elected to the Continental Congress when he was 29, and a couple years later started constructing our nation's constitution. We have every reason to believe that this generation can change things, and I'm just honored to be a small part of it. So thank you for joining us.